Up on the first edition of Table Tennis Troubleshooting, I'll go over shot selection in the sport of table tennis and the components of a short, undisplayed server. Table Tennis Troubleshooting starts now. Welcome to Table Tennis Troubleshooting, where I'll talk all aspects of improving in the sport of table tennis. My name is Brian Pace. What shot to play is the reason table tennis is a very complex sport. And the biggest obstacle to playing any shot is the thought process behind the shot selection. Fine, you've taken a full hand loop down the line. But what is the thought process behind that shot selection? That is so intricate that we're going to start this very first episode off with a very high level concept and that is shot selection. Pause it. Based on the position of the player on the near side, what shot selection would you take? A. Forehand loop to the fourth. B. Forehand loop to the back end. Or C. Forehand loop to the middle. Now, let's take a look at that clip in real time. Yep, I didn't see that coming. You probably didn't either. Now, let's take a look at this clip. Pause it. Now, tell me which shot you're more likely to take. Would that be A, top spin defense shot? B, forehand loop to the opponent's backhand? C, forehand loop to the opponent's forehand? Again, you probably didn't see that nor did the opponent or the crowd. For both of these points, there was a strong display of shot selection. This is the single most important factor to consider with playing any shot. Before you can really get a grasp of shot selection, you have to establish an instinctive theory. And having this theory will help create your thought process. What you have to understand about shot selection is based on time. So, let's take a look at the diagram. Type of ball and Type of effort equals your instinctive theory. You're going to be dealing with hard ball equals soft effort, soft ball equals hard effort, and a medium ball equals a medium effort. In this sequence, you can see how playing a soft effort can easily win the point. After executing the opening attack shot, my opponent made a strong block, and instead of trying to add power to my shot, Deciding to play a soft effort shot right to the back end is the best use of shot selection. This ball could have been hit harder, but making the point to play the ball softer but wider is a smarter play. Where players who encounter problems in this situation is trying to add a hard effort over top of a hard ball. And in these cases, you'll see many, many unforced errors. Look, the fact that the ball is hit hard limits your ability to load power and it also limits your ability to unload power. So the entry level shot is to take the hard effort and actually apply good placement. And in time, you'll be able to turn this shot into a shot that has power. Slow ball equals hard power is the situation that everyone in the sport of table tennis lives for. This is the slam dunk, the home run, the knockout blow. This is the shot that defines a player. Obviously, the advantage of this shot is it's a finishing shot. And the disadvantage is because it's hit so hard, historically it needs to be played to the deepest part of the table. A hard effort shot is an abrupt shot. And what you have to contemplate is how much you should do versus how much you can get away with. And if you go for an all out shot, you run the risk of not being in position if the ball is returned. Your best bet is to play an effort that allows you to fully recover so you can play another shot just below the all out effort without even understanding it. Most of the time, you're watching medium effort 
versus medium effort. In fact, if you look at any match, at 75% of your perceived effort, you're winning 75% of the points in each game. So this is the effort that wins the match. So what you have to look at is there's 100% of speed that's on the ball. You're responsible for 50%, the opponent is responsible for 50%. And if you keep that same amount of pressure on the ball, you don't allow your opponent to actually open up and play a bigger shot. And what they'll have to do, if they want to play more power, they'll have to violate their stroke system to get more power, that's risky, or they end up backing up and create more time to hit a bigger stroke, and that time deficit gives you an opportunity to create more power. Shot selection is a unique and overlooked aspect of table tennis. And if you're able to implement this concept, you'll find making decisions for any given shot more effortless in the hidden agenda. The hidden agenda is to become a better player versus just playing better. Don't you just hate it when a person says, you're playing better. That's not good enough. You want to be a better player and shot selection is the way. Son, I don't know if there's a perfect underspin serve, but I'm going to try my best to get you as close as possible. Every serve is made up of five major components, and they consist of the toss, stroke movement, ball contact, and type of contact, the height at which the contact is made, and the contact on the table. And now I'm going to go through all of those in slow motion so you can get a much better understanding how they're all pieced together. Toss can be low, medium, or hot. What you have to do is make sure the ball leaves your hand by six inches. Stroke movement is when you start to commit to the ball to make spin. And at this point, the racket is starting to turn horizontal. The stroke movement flows right into the next component, which is ball contact and type of contact. The type of contact has to be friction over force, which allows the ball to travel short on the table. The height of contact is very important because you want to make sure that your serve is not high enough over the net and it can be attacked. A great point of reference is making the height of the contact as close to the net as possible. The last component is contact on the table, which should be near the middle of the table. This will secure that the serve does not go deep if you have made friction over force the type of contact. Well, Hassan, I hope this information gives you insight into the fine art of serving. Thank you for watching the first episode of Table Tennis Troubleshooting. I hope you found this to be a benefit to your training and continued improvement. And more importantly, I hope that you got a deeper insight to just how complex this sport is. Uh, and it really does take a lot of work to see a little bit of progress, but it does matter. And I created this series for a broad range of athletes to take themselves from beginner to elite level athlete. In the next episode, we'll take a snapshot of your game by creating a technical property line. We'll judge at what point are you actually ready to forehand loop. We'll take a question from Juan Pachenko from New York. So remember, you subscribe, you send a question, I'll troubleshoot.